Welcome back to another episode of Black Girls Texting. It's your girl, Shari. Hey, bitches. It's your girl, Charles Pinky. I didn't know we were singing and I'm not prepared. It's Gwen. Oh, I gotta say it. <laughs> that was melodic. Um, yeah, I put all my group chats on mute because it'd be a lot. People continue the conversation. <laughs> you know, there's people who like, they just have to have the last word. Then there's people who like and heart everything. It's like, I oh, no, no, no. I got to mute y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I, hear I respect you. it. So I was surprised to see that you were a teacher. So you have a degree in education and math, and then you taught. And then made the transition yeah. to comedy. What was that like? Because Glenn and Chelsea were teachers and children are terrible. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think children are terrible. I think people are terrible and sometimes they start young. Uh, but um, the two are really not connected at all. Like, I think that if I had any inclination that that stand up could be a career for me as a child, then I would have went straight to that. But mm. I came from a home where my parents were very loving and, um, you know, strict, but my father was, um, you know, a veteran. My father was in the Navy and then he had like a civil job. He worked for the New York transit system. And my mom was a stay at home mom. And for years I watched her, have us and try and go back to school. And so the only thing that I knew coming out of high school was I want to finish college because nobody had a degree yet. You know, I didn't, I didn't know. I had like aunts and uncles that did that, but nobody directly from me. So I was like, I want to get a degree. I was always really good at math. I was like one of those kids that like tested and was like in a gifted and talented program and stuff like that, you know? And then I was like, well, teaching, you know, when I was in school, they were, they, 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 said a lot of times like, oh, if you're a girl in STEM, you can get your education paid for. If you're a girl in STEM, you know, that was what was promoted to me. And so that mm -hmm. was the route that I went because I knew I wanted to come out of school with a usable skill, an easy job to do. And I didn't really want debt. And so that's the reason why I went that route. Um, but then, you know, a really close friend of mine at the time, she was like a spoken word artist trying to be a rapper. And she was like, I'm moving to L.A. to be famous. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? These kids ain't really inspiring me like that. <laughs> <laughs> These kids ain't really doing it for me. And, and, you know, I was like a young teacher, you know, when you're like a 22, 23 year old teacher, I felt like I was getting a lot of harassment from the pet parents and not mm -mm. in, not in that way. Not like, Oh, you fine. And so the daddy's like, you know, mm -mm. I mean, like I would get the moms like, Hey, my kid wants to be a model. Can you give me any insight into how to be a model? Do you get what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. What? And I was just like, yeah, I was just like, these kids are great, but my heart's not here. So let me yeah. go explore the world. And that's what got me to L.A. 
And when I moved to LA, I had no idea that I would end up in comedy, but then everything that I kept getting into was comedy related, you know? Were you like and always so then, funny? Were you always funny? Like, like I'm trying to understand how it, you got to that place. Like where people were just like, you're funny, try it, get on stage, <clears throat> do an open mic. So one, um, okay. So one of the first things that I got cast for, which was like a prank, re a prank dating show in LA, like on BET or something. And my friend was like, Hey, they're auditioning. They need, they need funny girls. They need funny black girls. And I was like, why are you calling me? And he was like, because <clears throat> you're funny. And I was like, no, I'm not. And he was like, Zainab, just go to the audition. You are funny. And I went and I had booked, booked the role. Um, with that's very set. So I knew like I was taking improv classes and sketch classes and I was like joining groups and performing that in that medium. But like I never considered stand up and I, I never felt funny growing up. I didn't feel like uh, I think I felt cool, but I didn't feel funny. You know, like I don't think anybody <laughs> would have ever voted me like class clown. Uh, but now mm -hmm. people send me DMs all the time like. You were so funny in high school. And I'm like, when, where? Tell me, tell me what I did, you know? Um, <laughs> so yeah, like I, I think I did my first, I was around comedy so much like stand up just because I had started like assisting. I, I, I had been an assistant to a guy who was like managing comics. And so I was around comics so much. I think one day I just thought, let me try it. Mm. Like, I think that's it. I think it was just that mm. simple. And what yeah. was it like in those early days, like on the comedy scene, especially as a woman and a black woman? Um, I, I get the sense that like comedy can be very, it gives like a frat kind of vibe, like, like, mm -hmm. a, a, like the boys, boys, and they all like chill mm -hmm. together and they do the sets. Like, was it like that? Yeah, of course. And you could say it. It was a boys club and more specifically <laughs> white boys. Like, and it still exactly. is. It don't matter. As much as a lot of them are trying to pretend that they mad, like, oh, they taking all our jobs. Shut up. This is your <laughs> sport. Shut up. You know, it's your sport. You just ain't as great as you thought you was. Shut up. You know, <laughs> um, but it, it I, I've always been like, um, kind of like a loner. And I think it's because I, you know, have so many siblings. And so I never really sought out groups in the world. And so I, I say that to say like most comedians, their love interests are comedians, their friends mm -hmm. are comedians, their whole wedding is filled with comedians. That's not really my life. I think I'm a comedian that like is liked by most comedians, really cordial with, a, with every comedian. Like I, I can't say I have a bad relationship with any comedian, but they're not my friends. My friends are my friends and my friends are not stand up comedians. I have built some really amazing relationships now with women who are stand up comedians. But, you know, if, if I left stand up today, my still my closest friends would not I would not lose my closest friends or that connection with my closest friends. Mm -hmm. That's important. I feel like that's good. That probably as as you continue to grow is probably going to keep you like grounded. Does it feel like it's hard to stay grounded in L.A., like in Hollywood, in this industry? <clears throat> is it does it feel like hard to stay grounded? Is that what you said to us? Yeah, like I think like. You know, moving from the East Coast, it's a very different vibe. And now you're in L.A., like very different vibe. I live in L.A. too. I moved from Brooklyn. Do you think mm -hmm. like the, mm -hmm. was it a tough time to just like stay like a real person? <laughs> I, I, I do see that. That is a great question. Um, and I do see that it is hard for people. For me, it's not that hard. Um, and I think it's because like, it's the reason why I talk about being Muslim a lot, because that's where my like faith is. That's where my belief is. And it's very strong, you know, regardless of how I aesthetically present, it's, it's really deep rooted. And I really, truly believe that that's the thing that keeps me grounded. That's the thing mm -hmm. that doesn't allow me to get swept up in, uh, 
you know, like the desperation, the pretending, the competition, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I want to succeed, but my reasons for success are very clear and they have always been the same. It is to change my life and the life of the people that I love and to become an exam- become the example that I did not have when I was coming up. That that is that's my mission, mm-hmm. you know. That's and so, point. yeah, like, no, L- at the facade of LA. I mean, when you're really there, and I'm I'm sure you know, um, it's like, yeah, you got a nice car, but you also got nine roommates. Well, that ain't the way I want <laughs> a nice car, right? It's like when you find <laughs> out the truth, you like, uh, okay, that's not the way I want it. Let me stay over here. You know what I'm saying? And grind and hustle because you, you know, you prefer it to look a certain way, but I don't know. I just want what is to be what it is. That might sound really like naive and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, but I'm just like, nah, I want to, I want to be happy when I look in the mirror. I want to, I don't want to have anxiety or feel like a fraud when I lay my head down. I want peace, Mm -hmm. you know? So. Yeah, but I, I definitely think that my my faith helps me with that because it's the thing that I get to go back to that's between me and Allah. It's it's not dependent or rooted in any person, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's your own. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. That kind of transitions us so beautifully to your special hijabs off. Yes. Um, I'd love to kind of talk more about that. Um, so much of it, you spoke about being Muslim, your family, your upbringing. Mm-hmm. What led to that? And like, did it feel like a, to me, it felt like I was in your diary in a really weird way because you went really back into like a lot of your growing up and apparently y'all was all up in each other's diary. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but I'd love to know, like, how did this come to be? Well, one, I just love that you said that because I really want anybody that watches it to walk away feeling like they have a pretty solid foundation of like who I am Mm -hmm. and where I come from. And so if you feel like you just opened up the pages of my diary that that I feel like then, wow, you walked away with what I wanted you to walk away Mm -hmm. with, you know, Um, but. Yeah, I just, I, um, I really wanted, I feel like this is my first special and I feel like there's m- many more to come, but I look at them as building blocks, you know, and I wanted to like put out uh, a pretty solid foundation, just a, just a, just a nice start, you know, into like who I am, where I come from. And I wanted people to get a sense of, of, you know, a sense of me so that anything that I put out after that is like, oh yeah, I get this. This is the next part of the story that she's giving us. This is the next chapter, you know? And don't get me wrong. It's not like the next special is like, oh, and this is what happened to me when I was a teenager. Not like that, but you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like everything will build on. It's like when you look at, so when I was a kid, the first special I ever saw was Eddie Murphy's Raw. And I didn't know Mm -hmm. that there was a special before that. I saw that when, I don't know, I was probably too young to see it, but I saw it when I was pretty young. And I remember when I was about 19 years old, a friend of mine was like, oh, you like, why you, you like raw so much. You like raw so much. I'm like, it's the best thing I've ever seen. And he was like, it's not better than delirious. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. So, Mm -hmm. and he was like, delirious is in order to like raw you gotta like delirious and I was like "Mm, I don't know about that because I don't know delirious is and I love raw you know what I'm saying like I you know your logic seems flawed Mm -hmm. um and so he was like okay no 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 I gotta put on delirious for you and when he put on delirious Delirious wasn't funnier to me than Raw because Raw is the st- that's the, that was my introduction, you know. Right. But as I was watching it, I was like, "Oh shoot! If I had saw Delirious first, then Raw, Raw would have been even exponentially funnier mm-hmm. to me because they really are just the next part of they're just building blocks, you know." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping this, this special is, but I, but I also wanted to talk about things, uh, 
I feel like comedy is is I feel like we should make people laugh, but I almost feel like I'm wasting your time and stage time if I am not bringing levity to conversations um, and experiences that don't often get levity. And so mm -hmm. for me, a lot of a lot of a, a lot of my Muslim identity is not what is portrayed in media in scripted television or film. And I'm like, well, I can contribute to this conversation, a different narrative, you know, of this faith. And I wanted to do that. Um, and also, <laughs> you know, if I, I have 12 siblings, there are stories for days. When I get on stage, sometimes I have to tell myself, don't talk about my family because I got stories for days, you know? <laughs> um, but I just wanted to kind of, um, I don't know, I wanted, I wanted people to feel like they were coming into my living room and hanging out with me for a little while mm -hmm. and getting to know me, yeah. you know? And I, yeah, and I was hoping once they left, they'd want to come back. Yeah, I even love like the intimacy of it and how you did it in the round. Was that to create mm -hmm. yeah, that closeness? Yeah. I, Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, Glenn. Like I wanted to I, I wanted it to feel intimate. At first I was saying, and now I understand why people was looking at me crazy, like all the producers I was meeting with, I was like, Yeah, I want a really voyeuristic view. And, and everybody was like voyeuristic. <laughs> and I, I realize now that when you <laughs> I, I realize now that when you say voyeuristic, like from the people ceiling. think sex. <laughs> but yeah, but really like, what I was trying to accomplish. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, you know, we we behave differently when we think no one's watching, you know? And mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted that level of intimacy. Um, you know, and I also I was trying to accomplish two things. I wanted that level of intimacy with the audience that was present for that particular show. But I also wanted the audience that watches at home to feel like they were there. I didn't want it to feel separate. Mm. Mm -hmm. I love that. You spoke about your siblings and I wonder, cause you talked about them a lot in the special. How did they feel mm -hmm. watching the special and hearing all that you talked about? And how do you manage that? Because you're you're a comedian, so you're talking about your life, which involves other people. How does that work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am um, my younger brother, who I did the whole journal bit on. Uh, he's the one that I wrote the late night joke about, and um, he's the one who I was saying maybe he's the gay kid. Um, he was actually <laughs> really appreciative. <laughs> he was he he was honored. He told me that he was honored that he had uh, taken up such a big chunk of my special, um, my, my younger brother, who I say his actual name, his real name, when I'm talking about, you know, uh, the United States department of treasury shutting my account down. Um, <laughs> I, I, he, I just, act, I called him and was like, Hey, is it okay if I use your real name? And he was like, Oh, he was like, what's the joke. And then I told him and he was like, Oh yeah. That, Cause a lot of it is our real stories. They experienced it with me. You right. know, mm -hmm. and so he's like, "Oh yeah, 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 yo, that's crazy. Remember when that happened? You know, like now we just reminiscing. Like, yo, remember when they thought mm -hmm. you was a terrorist? You know, like, <laughs> but <laughs> but he's just a little black boy. You get what I'm saying? He's just a little black boy in 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 New York. Um, uh, and then my sister, who she, my one of my two of my sisters were at the taping, but the sister who I call a gold digger, she was there, <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't sure if she had heard it before. And so between we, I did two shows. So between the first and the second show, I was like, "Hey, are you okay with the uh, Doctor Mrs. bit?" And she was like, "Oh my God, I love it! I <laughs> love it!" <laughs> I so love that. yeah, so I think that they're on board. Like you know. My mom said to me once, you know, she she was like, you know, Zainab, I really love watching you, but I hope you know what not to say. Mm. <laughs> and I got her loud and clear. I got her warning loud mm -hmm. and clear. Mm -hmm. Some things are off limits, you know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it was also cool to see the representation, like you said, of like a black Muslim woman, because obviously I know there are black Muslims, but yeah, on TV, Muslims don't tend to look like us. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was like, that was cool. And I also wonder, because the specials call hijabs off, like that is so like in your face Muslim. And I was talking to a friend who was talking about 9-11 and when that happened she like took off her hijab and it was so like you know it was a, it was a time for her where she was almost ashamed of her muslimness mm. right now yeah, do you feel yeah. like how important it is to have this sort of representation i don't know this the conversation of muslims is big right now <laughs> mm-hmm. if you catch my uh, yeah especially <laughs> oh i catch it it's called um it, it it's <laughs> It's a huge conversation, but it's still the same conversation, unfortunately, which is somehow there is um, less empathy for, um, you know, the 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 brown person or or the Muslim, and more specifically, you know, like there's still it's mm-hmm. still that same same narrative where there mm-hmm. is less you know, less empathy, less care, less, um, I mean, I'm getting it. I'm, I'm, I'm personally getting it all the time in my DMs, like people mm. really wanting me to, um, uh, speak up and speak up in the way that they want me to and speak up in the way, uh, in a way that would make them feel seen, you know, um, I personally with, with what's going on right now, and I can, we can speak more specifically if you guys don't mind, but I'm specific. Well, I mean, we're specifically yeah. talking about Israel and, and, and Palestine. I, mm-hmm. I direct. While it's not rocket science to know that there is an oppressor in some, in a group being oppressed. Um, it's not rocket science. I do think that there is a conflation of religion. It seems like the narrative puts Jewish people against Muslim people, um, Mm -hmm. which is, which is wrong. It's that, that it's, it's, it's really conflating an issue um, because there are a lot of people in Israel who are not Jewish. There are a lot of Jewish people who call for a ceasefire. There are people who are in, you know, who are Palestinian that are not Muslim. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's yeah. not about the a battle of these two faiths. So that mm-hmm. so I, so I just want to say that. Um, but with hijabs off specifically, I really I it was it was really my attempt at um giving a wink to m- Muslim women specifically. Um, Mm -hmm. and Muslim women of all ethnic backgrounds, because I think that Muslims and non-Muslims only identify Muslim women as women who wear hijab. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's one narrative where people feel like Muslim women are oppressed because they have to do this. And then but it's that's not the, and that and that comes from a lot of different places, right? Then mm-hmm. but there's there's there are there are Muslim women who cover up every day and they do the worst shit you could ever think of. <laughs> and there are women who don't cover up and they are their dean, they 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 follow their dean to a T, you mm-hmm. know? Um and I just wanted to I don't know, start a conversation or at least try to create space for all of us. I I was when I first started running my hour, I think at the very, very beginning, I was uh, either in Chicago or D.C. or something. And the the Muslim woman in Iraq, she had just been killed for her hijab not being forget it being off. It wasn't tied correctly. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm oh, blanking wow. on her name right now. Forgive me. Yeah, yeah, it was big news. It was, mm-hmm. it was, it was big news for a little bit, and then it went away. You know, um, right. And I found that all of the um, harassment that I get online, whenever I post a joke or anything talking about being Muslim, from a lot of people who claim to be Muslim, they're like, "You can't be Muslim because you don't cover up." And so that was where that joke was born. Like, oh well, this is a wig, so technically, you know, like that. <laughs> 
gotcha, you know? <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> um, and so I just wanted to, that was kind of my way of saying it, it's okay, whatever, however you choose to um, present yourself aesthetically, that has nothing to do with your faith in Islam. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I was trying to say. <laughs> uh, but I do recognize that because there are so many negative narratives, especially like in, in our part of the world about Muslims, I definitely understand how people around the world, people from Muslim countries can feel very protective of the narrative, you mm -hmm. know, and might feel like, well, this is contributing to that negativity. You know, I, I do understand that 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 was not my intent. I don't think I'm doing that, but I do understand how that can be a thought. Mm. But it's also your reality and your lived experience. And I, I feel like I got to say something funny right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, bring a little. We levity. just we, we went there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we go all well, over. Well, well, do you have to? Do, can I? May I ask this question? Do you have to date someone who's Muslim? Um, you, you don't have to, no, you don't have to, I don't have to, I actually, okay, you, I was asking have, you specifically. Oh, me specifically. I do not mm -hmm. like I, again, you know, just how I said, I know, I know Muslim girls who, um, cover up and they do, they do things I would not think of doing in my life, you know, <laughs> just like I know Muslim, yeah, just like I know Muslim men who beat their wives, beat their girlfriends, lie, cheat. So for me. I don't care what religion or faith you're mm -hmm. claiming. I'm looking for a, a man that is honest, that is integral, that has character, that works hard, you know, that appreciates my sense of humor, that ain't trying to put me in a box, you know. And if that comes in some other faith, some other belief in something, then then I'll just take that. I will say that I do find a... a I do find, uh, I do feel safer when the person is connected to a higher source. Like I ain't never really dated nobody that's been like, nah, I ain't no God. I just be like, dang, what's that like? <laughs> so you think this all you? Okay. <laughs> that's, I mean, I never even thought of that. I've never dated someone who th believed that either. That would be. That would be different or something I'm so vastly different. Yeah. Or something crazy, Chelsea, like, like, um, yeah, nah, it's like, we all form from like the bubbles on the oh, alien's girl. back. It's like, <laughs> no. mm -mm. it's like, we, we not going to work. I, you know what I'm mm -mm. saying? Somebody, somebody get me a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I take, I take a well, Buddhist. Listen. We be over here. Chat. Nam yo ho and Ray K. Kelwin before. <laughs> I play with you and some Ailey, some, some, you know, like that is a little bit too foreign for me. No, I feel you. Bubbles. <laughs> we love a God fearing man over at black girls texting, whatever that looks like. I'd or Allah say, fearing. Yes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> High power fearing man. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. I will say, yes. and I don't know if this is an You know what else, too? I think it's so I, I, hot and when I, they pull I, out the I, rug. I love doing this by way of, like, comedy. Like, just kind of, like, educating. Like, you know, my friend, mo most of my friends are Christian. One of my friends, very funny comedian, Yamanika Saunders. She's so funny to me. Yamanika is, like, a, like the staunch Christian, right? Black Christian. Black Baptist Christian, right? And so, Baptist. to the point mm -hmm. where she'll be, like, Yes, to the point where she'll be like, um, okay, I'm gonna ask shit. Well, yo, this is crazy. That's Yamanika texted calling me. Is that not crazy? That's oh kind of crazy. <laughs> no, that's crazy. Her palm well, she was gotta itching. go play lotto. Tell her go play the number. Yo. Wait, so can you black. see it? Can you see it? it says Yamanika? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, that is she crazy. Needs go, she needs to go play. She no, needs to go to play. I, I, I'll call her after and tell her that you gotta you gotta play the lot of crazy. Um, <laughs> but she's always like she's always like okay I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask Jesus and you ask Allah and I'm like she or she'll be like I'm gonna ask God and then you ask Allah I'm like girl what are you talking about Allah is Arabic for God that is not a separate God 
It's not. <laughs> it ain't some other entity. It's God. It's the well, same one as of my Yasu, friends, y- You know what I'm saying? One mm-hmm. of my friends is in like a mixed religion, re- religious relationship. I don't know the proper way to say that, but she was talking about how it's important for her, for him to convert. And I was like, well, if he doesn't, and he's this amazing person, your child is going to get like double the blessings because whoever's wrong or right, <laughs> one of it is going to hit your kid. So mm-hmm. I think you should let him be <laughs> wrong or right. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> We'll see. Right. <laughs> oh, I like God. that logic. I think it's called interfaith, interfaith relationship. Interfaith. That's yeah. it. Yes. That's the term. <laughs> right? We got a 50 50 chance. So let's, right. you know, I, my, 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 my parents were co- converts. My parents both were born Christian and converted to Islam. Mm. Um, and, and so while I believe that they would love us to remain Muslim, um, I think that. My, my, you know, my mother always told me that, like, we, we get to choose. Like, I think that's how you raise kids, you know? It's like, yeah, I'm going to instill these things in you, but you ultimately have to choose what is right for you, you know? So I think it yeah. doesn't matter what what type of household the kid is brought up in. Like, I would hope that each, I would hope that parents allow them to find find their own way and accept them for you know, whatever they come to, except the aliens bubbling on the back. <laughs> <laughs> We're not accepting that one. I agree. I feel like expose the kids, let them find their own way so that it actually matters to them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So is there anything on the horizon you can tell us about? A little inside scoop? Inside. Think, Shade, are you saying something? <laughs> if you are, I can't hear you. Oh no! Say it again. Can you hear me now? No. Oh, the internet is struggling. Chelsea, you try. Oh, can, can you hear me? me? I can hear Chel- I Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, I, I can hear okay. Chelsea. Um. Okay, Shadi's question was, "What's on the horizon? What's coming up next? What should we oh. expect?" Well, now you know we're out of the strike, which is wonderful. Um, yes. I mean, we, we we still have to work on it. I mean, work on it. We still have to vote on it. But um, so I am developing. I'm in development for like my own shows, you know, um, which I, there's a few th- there's a few different things in development. Of course, I'm working on my next hour. Uh, like I hit the road very early. 2024 to work on the next hour, which I plan on filming, I think at the end of 2024. Um, Hopefully we get another season of upload Um, and yeah. And, and just keep, keep working, you know, keep Mm -hmm. like, keep getting, keep getting my story out there and keep, you know, just keep creating space. Cause I feel like, if I'm there, then that's room for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Then that creates mm-hmm. a pathway for someone to come behind me. Absolutely. I love that. Well, thank you so yeah. much. We loved having you join us. Oh my God. I'm so sorry that the network was shitty. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's okay. I think, I think our producer can fix it. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you ladies so much for having me. Thank of you. Of course. So nice to meet you. All righty. Have a wonderful evening. Take care. Thank you. All right. Bye.